Today, the eyes and ears of the 21st century are focused on new developments, new technologies, new emerging companies. We're on the scene to bring it to you as it happens. We anchor from our new studios in Los Angeles and then go out all over America to get to the heart of the story. I'm Bert Tenzer. I'm Bella Shaw. I'm Doug Llewellyn. I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Our show focuses on corporate America, its stories, its drama, its breakthroughs. We'll be going out today to report on an organization that is impacting our lives and shaping our future. Hi, I'm Doug Llewellyn. Both William Shatner and I are proud to bring you this most important series that focuses on the impact that entrepreneurs are making on our nation and our lives. You know, part of keeping the heart of America strong lies in helping Americans to live productive, quality, and healthy lives. And our guest today has devoted his life to that mission. It all began when he started to develop products to answer the medical needs of the members of his own family. For example, when his granddaughter developed a childhood disease, he invented what is known as the Phillips molluscum treatment system and in 1987 he invented the world's first infrared thermometer that received inventor of the year award as the preferred way to take a patient's temperature it is in use now literally all over the world and then when his father had trouble with his legs he invented what he called the rebuilder to stop the pain and numbness and then he made it available to everyone it's a truly amazing story about an amazing gentleman and we're about to find out just how he does all of this he is the founder and the president of a company that is known as the rebuilder medical Tech Technologies Corporation. It's headquartered in Charlestown, West Virginia, and as a side note, the company just recently went public. His name is Dr. David Phillips. Doctor, welcome. Nice to have you here. Well, thank you. I appreciate <coughs> being here. I mean, I'm impressed by these things you've done. You've, you've had some remarkable success. Necessity is the mother of invention. No kidding. And I, <laughs> I would imagine every parent out there, at least right now in this day and age, is certainly familiar with the thermometer that you created because that really is the way they take temperatures almost everywhere now. Hospitals, doctor's offices, and in homes. You should be very proud. Well, thank you. Let me ask you a little bit about some of the kinds of problems that, uh, that intrigue you enough and that people come to you and talk to you about to get your, you know, your, your appetite interested to create a solution for it. What are the, what are the, the big problems? Well, initially what comes to my attention is when a, somebody in my family has an issue. So once I solve that, then I sometimes I look at other people. I say, is this prevalent in, in the population? And for instance, now with the aging of America, the baby boomers getting older, as I mentioned, I'm the first of the baby boomers born in 1946. And as we pretend to get a little bit older, natural aging takes over. And disease processes begins, one of which is diabetes. In America, 7% of the population, uh, 20 million people, have diabetes. About half of those patients are eventually going to have problems with circulation and tingling and numbness and pain in their feet and their legs. Also, it treating other diseases like cancer, as we get older, one of the side effects of chemotherapy is neuropathy. So I said, okay, maybe I can develop something that is affordable and make it easy for people to get and easy for people to use. Now when you mention neuropathy, a lot of people, including yours truly, may not totally understand what neuropathy is. What is it? Neuropathy means a uh, nerve problem. Path pathy, like pathology, right. and neuro meaning brain or nerve. Okay. So it's a problem with your nerves. It's a generic term like heart disease just means a problem with your heart. Okay. So it can have a number of different um, names. Idiopathic means we don't know what it is. But the problem with it is that people have pain and they go to drugs for drug therapy which has side effects. Then they have numbness and then they can't feel the carpet. They can't feel if they have a cut. So the cut gets infected. The infection can turn to gangrene which can lead to an amputation. Uh, even if they don't have symptoms quite that bad, they lose their balance many times. And as we get older, if you fall and break your hip, that can be a, a significant issue. It even extends into the, the area of uh, some of the side effects of the neuropathy of problems sleeping. So uh, this particular system kind of addresses all those things. And this is what your dad was suffering from. Right. Yeah, he actually <coughs> first started off with, with, got me interested, was he had open heart coronary artery bypass surgery. And they take the greater saphenous vein out of the leg to use as bypass material. Right. And then they sew up the leg. And the next day they said, okay, Earl, you get out and start walking. He said, there's no way I can walk. Uh, you cut me from head to toe here. 
So, and I knew he wasn't going to walk, and I didn't want his legs to atrophy, and he was in pain, and he does not like to take drugs. So I developed this just really in about three days so that he could regain the, the circulation in his legs. So anyway, you call it the rebuilder. Because it rebuilds the circulation and right. rebuilds the nerves. I'm going to put it out here on the desk and people can see exactly what it is. This, by the way, is now, it's available on the internet. People all over the world can, right. can you know, get this over the internet. Tell me how it works. Now, there's more to it than just what we see here. Sure. Um, it's a device, but there, there are attachments that, that go to it. Tell me about how it works. Well, it has signal pads, and the primary way of using it, which looks a little silly, is we have a split compartment foot bath. It's actually a bucket similar to what you might use with washing a car. And it's got water on both sides. You put warm water and Epsom salts, you drop the signal pads in the water, and you put your feet in the water, and then sit back in an easy chair at home, and it sends an electrical signal from one foot, sends a signal to the water, to the foot, travels up the knee, to the hip, to the lower back, the nerve roots. In order to make an electrical connection, it goes all the way to the other foot. Then it reverses polarity and goes back. And that wakes up the nerves. It brings the nerves back closer together. The problem with neuropathy, the common denominator between all the different causes of neuropathy is poor blood supply. Poor blood supply then reduces the oxygen. And in order for the nerve to survive, it shrinks. And when it shrinks, the gap between them gets bigger. So what we do is we send a much larger signal that's exactly duplicate of a healthy nerve signal up one leg, cross over the back, down to the other. Once you wake up these nerves, they're hungry. Now they say, okay, I need more fuel. They've been asleep a long time. Yeah. So now we stimulate the calf muscles to contract and relax just as if the patient was walking around the neighborhood to increase the blood flow. Now, you attach these, the, the little tags. What do, you, what do you call them? The to signal pads. We signal call pads, them. all right, signal pads. You attach them to your, to your body at various points. You put them on your feet. You actually put them in water and then put your feet in water. What, the simplest what? way is to um, drop the signal pads into the <coughs> buckets of water, yeah. put your feet in there. The warm water vasodilates or opens up the blood vessels in the skin. That allows more blood flow. Then the calf muscles contracting pumps the blood back up to the heart, infusing the newly awakened nerves while the signal wakes up the nerves. The uh, signal itself also causes the brain to release endorphins, which are internal opiates, internal pain relievers. These pain relievers travel throughout the bloodstream and make a patient very calm, relaxed, and actually makes them sleep, so they sleep through the night. You can also attach the pads directly onto the skin on the bottom of the feet and mm -hmm. elevate your feet, and then gravity helps pull the blood. If you have sore fingers or a sore back, then you can put it on those areas also. And how long does the treatment last that you, you, you 30 use minutes. this? 30 about, minutes. About 30 minutes as an automatic shutoff. And then roughly how long, how many treatments do you have to go through before you begin feeling some relief? Patient feels relief with the very first treatment. Really? While your feet are in the buckets, you feel nothing. No pain, no numbness. You actually feel the warmth. So they have a 30-minute window of feeling normal. You and don't feel a tingling? You feel it, you feel it tingle yeah. uh, on and off, but you right. feel that, but you, the pain is gone. As soon as you shut it off, then the pain begins to return. And it usually lasts for two to four hours. Now, every time you use it, the results get better, and they accumulate to where eventually a person can go from twice a day to once a day to twice a week to once a week on a maintenance program. How's your dad doing now? Well, he's 83, and he works every single day in our office, <laughs> full time. So he's doing marvelous. Oh, yeah. And he works in the assembly department. He walks around supervising people. All right. He no came problem. To, he, no drugs. He, you realized he needed, he needed help. How did you come up with the idea for this? Well, it's just my nature that I can't seem to leave things alone, and I had invented other things. Uh, 1975, my wife developed a lump in her breast, and I didn't like the way the medical people at that time went about diagnosing it and determining what to do about it. So I invented a system called GST system, using infrared heat sensing. And uh, we took that company in public in 1980. But I had to go into libraries <coughs> and learn everything I could about breast cancer. And I realized that tissues growing faster would give off more heat. Then I went to the engineering libraries and studied everything I could learn about uh, the engineering process of electronics, and I put it together. Yeah, it's interesting. You're a PhD, not a medical doctor. So, right. So you go into deep research when you decide to work on something like this. Absolutely, and then we try it. And since it's designed for a patient, I'm not just saying, hey, there's a market. Let's see if we can meet it. No, yeah. I say, I've got to make something that works. I don't care how much it costs. Right. It has to work. And then every so often, I find something where people say, well, I'd like to have that too. So then the next challenge is how do I simplify it 
make it reasonable in price, and then how do we simplify this so people can use it? You notice that device has large knobs. In today's electronics, I could have watches have these little bitty buttons. I don't know about your sure. VCR, but mine still blinks 12. Right. Uh, <laughs> so these are big enough so older people with arthritic, knob, arthritic hands can adjust it. Yeah, it's easy for them to, yeah. Uh, it's operated exactly. by a nine volt battery, so right. it's perfectly safe. Uh, it just, uh, so then I try to create it so that it will solve the problem for everybody. Then the pricing is an issue because if you go through normal distributors, uh, the, a, a price a device that I can sell like this for $400, or I have to sell for $2,800 by the time it goes through three levels of distributors because they each double the price. So we sell it to patients directly on the web. Let me ask you about the, the, the medical community itself. Do they recognize this? Is this something that has to have FDA approval in order yes, for you to sell we, it? Yes, we went through that process. It's FDA approved. Yeah. It's currently available in about 172 doctor's offices and hospitals around the, around the country. Really? So doctors recognize the benefits of it? Yes, but it, it's not wildly and widely known yet. Yeah. Uh, we've kind of laid low for the last four or five years trying to get everything in order to get production up, develop clinicals, and when we're just about ready to release some clinical trials. Like you mentioned we recently, recently I was just went public. Is that why you just took the company public? Yes, we're now at the stage where we can now afford to expand our production facilities and, and we're going to do some late night commercials and things of that nature and make it more available, all our products. So what do you see for the pet potential of this, of this little device, the Rebuilder? Well, I see that uh, since it's so nice and small, we find that when it's in a person's home, they usually have to go looking for it because other people in the house find that, that it's helpful for them. We have one college in uh, Texas that uses it for the football players. They use it for the patient, for the players to warm up before they go on the field and they find they have less injuries because... It contracts their muscles. Mm -hmm, and right. gives increased blood flow. <laughs> right. And then since they're always having minor aches and pains and injuries and swellings, they can use it to take that down. Uh, it wasn't designed for that, but they're finding uses for it. For that, for that purpose. We're exploring the fascinating story of the Rebuilder Medical Technologies Corporation of Charlestown, West Virginia, with Dr. David Phillips, who's the founder and CEO of the company, uh, which we mentioned a little while ago, just recently went public. Uh, the doctor is, a, is an inventor of medical devices and technologies that have been remarkably effective.